Primitive data types. In Kotlin, everything is an object. We don't find primitive types, like ones we can use in Java. This reduces code complexity. We can call methods and properties on any variable. For example, this is how we can convert the int variable to a char. Usually, under the whole 1D types such as int, long, or char are optimized but we can still call methods on them as on any other objects. By default, Java platform stores numbers as JVM primitive types, but when a nullable number reference, for example, int, is needed, or generics are involved, Java uses boxed representation. Boxing means wrapping a primitive type into corresponding boxed primitive type. This means that the instance behaves as an object. Examples of Java boxed representations of primitive types are int versus integer or a long versus long. Since Kotlin is compiled to JVM bytecode. The same is true here. One value is stored as primitive type. Two value is stored as boxed integer, composite type. This means that each time we create a number, byte, short, int, long, double, float, or with char, boolean. It will be stored as a primitive type unless we declare it as a nullable type, byte, char, array, and so on. Otherwise, it will be stored as a boxed representation. One is non-nullable, so it is stored as primitive type. 2b is null so it is stored as boxed representation. 3b is still stored as boxed representation although it has a value. Generic types cannot be parameterized using primitive types, so boxing will be performed. It's important to remember that using boxed representation, composite type, instead of primary representation can have performance. Penalties, because it will always create memory overhead compared to primitive type representation. This may be noticeable for lists and arrays containing a huge number of elements, so using primary representation may be crucial for application performance. On the other hand, we should not worry about the type of representation when it comes to a single variable or even multiple variable. Declarations, even in the Android world, where memory is limited. Now let's discuss the most important Kotlin primitive data types, numbers, characters, booleans, and arrays. Numbers. Basic Kotlin data types used for numbers are equivalents of Java numeric primitives. Kotlin, however, handles numbers a little bit differently than Java. The first difference is that there are no implicit conversions for numbers smaller types are not implicitly converted to bigger types. This means that we cannot assign a value of type int to the long variable without an explicit conversion. As we said, in Kotlin everything is an object, so we can call the method and explicitly convert int type to long to fix the problem. At first, this may seem like boilerplate code, but in practice this will allow us to avoid many errors related to number conversion and save a lot of debugging time. This is actually a rare example where Kotlin syntax has more amount of code than Java. The Kotlin standard library supports the following conversion methods for numbers. We can, however, explicitly specify a number literal to change the inferred variable type. The second difference between Kotlin and Java numbers is that number literals are slightly different in some cases. There are the following kinds of literal constants for integral values. Octal literals are not supported. Kotlin also supports a conventional notation for floating point numbers. Char. Characters in Kotlin are stored in type char. In many ways, characters are similar to strings, so we will concentrate on the similarities and differences. To define char, we must use a single quote kind of opposite to a string where we are using double quotes. 
1 defines variable of type char. 2 defines variable of type string. In both characters and strings, special characters can be escaped using backslash. The following escape sequences are supported. Let's define char containing the yin yang unicode character, u plus 262f. Arrays. In Kotlin, arrays are represented by the array class. To create an array in Kotlin, we can use a number of Kotlin standard library functions. The simplest one is array of. By default, this function will create an array of boxed int. If we want to have an array containing short or long, then we have to specify array type explicitly. As previously mentioned, using boxed representations may decrease application performance. That's why Kotlin has a few specialized classes representing arrays of primitive types to reduce boxing memory overhead, short array, int array, long array, and so on. These classes have no inheritance relation to the array class, although they have the same set of methods and properties. To create instances of this class we have to use the corresponding factory function. It's important to notice and keep in mind this subtle difference, because those methods look similar, but create different type representations. One generic array of boxed long elements. Two array containing primitive long elements. Knowing the exact size of an array will often improve performance, so Kotlin has another library function, array of nulls. That creates an array of a given size filled with null elements. We can also fill a predefined size array using the factory function that takes the array size as the first parameter and the lambda that can return the initial value of each array element given its index as the second parameter. Accessing array elements in Kotlin is done the same way as in Java. Element are also indexed the same way as in Java, meaning the first element has index 0, second has index 1, and so on. Not everything works the same and there are some differences. Main one is that arrays in Kotlin, unlike in Java, arrays are invariant. The Boolean type Boolean is a logic type that has two possible values, true and false. We can also use the nullable boolean type. Boolean type also supports standard built-in operations that are generally available in most modern programming languages. Logical OR returns true when any of two predicates return true. Logical N returns true when both predicates return true. Negation operator returns true for false, and false for true. Keep in mind that we can only use not null boolean for any type of condition. I hope you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and give a thumbs up it helps our channel a lot. Thank you. See you in the next episode.